Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Christopher from the One Up Boys channel. And this is my good friend, Daniel Rose. What's good everyone? And we have some predictions for this upcoming Summer Slime event that's happening tomorrow. We're gonna make a vlog about this. Yep. So stay tuned. So, yeah. No, that list is good set. I'm excited for the show for the most part. There are a few matches that are questionable, to say the least. But we'll go through them. Uh, so I personally have every match listed in the way I think the card should go from start to finish. So there isn't a pre-show match currently announced, but I personally would have on the pre-show. I throw Alexa Bliss versus Eva Marie. I say this with all due respect. They are the absolute two worst things going on in all of WWE right now, and that's <laughs> why this match needs to go on the pre-show. <laughs> you just get to throw them under the bus, dude. <laughs> I, I kind of just have to be straightforward. Um, and. Yeah, this match makes me, these are the kind of matches that makes me embarrassed to watch this shit. So, really please put it on the pre-show. Pretty please. And honestly, anyways, it'll be best time to buy merchandise anyways. Anything you do is a fucking favor by doing that. It's yeah, not garbage out of purpose. Exactly. So, pre-show match. I'm giving it to Alexa Bliss and her stupid doll. What about you? Probably the same. Okay. Yep. So now we go on to the main show. I will start the show off with a big match. I'd start off with AJ and almost and RK Bro. I think it's a match not too huge, but a match huge enough to get the show rolling and go like, okay, we're here with SummerSlam. And then we get to see finally AJ Styles take home the Riddle Bros, which is the greatest fucking thing that any order will do in his goddamn career. Okay. And I'm counting from the legendary status because RK Bro is GOAT. 14 time world champion. The best thing he's ever done in his career is being a tag team with Riddle. Dude, Riddle's the best thing that could happen to the Little Big Brothers. I get what you're saying, but. They're not brothers! They are brothers, dude. All right, good pros. There, there are arcade pros. There are arcade pros. Um, so I'm really hoping that he doesn't do a screwy finish. Let one team or the other win, please. Don't, don't, don't rock, rock fans from this. Because I know sometimes during SummerSlam they'll like they'll like to do a lot of disqualification or count out finishes. I'm really hoping we don't see any of that this year, especially since it's the first, uh, you know, SummerSlam uh, since the pandemic that we've seen in an open crowd. I really hope they just don't screw around here. They really give us a great show. But I'm gonna go with what I think and want to happen. I think RK Bro win. I think we're gonna get a great moment to kick off the show. Um, and yeah, I think it'll be great for both Orton and Red Light. Hopefully, but knowing that Nick Man is all controversial with NXT, he might stay, stay with us. Right, because Riddle was an NXT guy <laughs> before jumping up to the main roster. Hopefully yeah. Vince Meg doesn't let AJ Styles win. But no. something new. And the other thing I really like about this match is when you look at Randy Orton, you look at Omos, you look at AJ, and you look at Riddle, all four of them have completely different characters, completely different wrestling styles. We don't know what kind of match you're going to get out of here. And this is the most unpredictable car crash style match we could be seeing on the entire show. Like, that's pretty cool. That's I pretty know. cool right there. And it probably wouldn't like, be my personal favorite Riddle matches. is nothing like AJ. Who, they're nothing like Orton. They're nothing like Omos. It's, mm -hmm. it's interesting. It's an interesting dynamic to say the least. Because uh, last month they were fighting the Viking Raiders, even though that was a good little match or whatever, I would have to say that, I don't know, almost was just battling two bigger giants. Just, it was whatever. So yeah, RK Bro for the win. That's my prediction. Hopefully it comes out the way we hope, but we'll see what happens tomorrow. If they, I could also see them being like, you know what, we got nothing going on after SummerSlam. Screw we finish, then we'll keep the whole thing rolling, which I hope doesn't happen. But I can very well see it happen. Well, on to the next match, good sir. Next match, second match in the card, I'd give the Triple Threat Raw Women's Championship match out the way. Uh, Nikki Ash versus Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair. Now, I have to say, I think... Okay, I'm going to be blunt with this one too. Nikki Ash sucks. She's and trying. She is She's trying. almost a superhero. I've almost won the match! No, you're the fucking champion! You win matches, you loser! Why are you the champ? But, but okay, on Raw this week, okay. she competed in two matches mm -hmm. and lost them both. But then she's the champion. She's pulling a Johnny Gargano, dude. Okay, she's trying no, to be like. But a when hero Johnny lost every time, it was because it would build up to like that huge moment. You know? mm -hmm. Nikki was nothing before this superhero character. That's so not true. Like, she was merchandise to sell to young girls and children. <laughs> she was the super. <laughs> she's an industry plant. <laughs> yeah. Um. Rhea Ripley, uh, I used to be a fan of her, keyword used to, because they really have taken all the appeal out of her uh, since getting out of NXT. And then as for Charlotte Flair, I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut. Anyways, 
So, uh, I think Charlotte is going to win the belt here, though, because she always wins. After the match, I expect the Becky Lynch return because they're going to try to probably combat that CM Punk return yesterday. Or, yeah, yesterday. Or today, if you're watching or whatever. Yeah. But it's still not going to be as hype as CM Punk, which is kind of sad seeing that AEW did that shit on purpose to release the No, we the know exactly show. why they did this August 20th show. And can we blame them? No. Exactly. Exactly. So, I have to say Charlotte's winning, but I think Becky's going to return after. It'll be a great moment. It's just, everyone's going to think about Punk. That, that's all I can say. Now, next match, uh, Drew McIntyre versus Jinder Mahal. This is just filler for Drew McIntyre. He's winning here. Let's just not kid ourselves. This match is going to probably be like the 10 minute match the most. Yeah, at the I most. Know, at at the like most. This is definitely not going to be a long match. No. Ever. So, easy Drew McIntyre. Okay, fourth match, SmackDown Tag Belts. I wish this was a ladder match, but it's fine. It's still going to be a great match. Usos versus Mysterios. The current champions are the Usos who beat them last month. We don't talk about that, dude. Um, dude, that match was garbage. <laughs> but it was a good match. It just had, you know, the Mysterios got screwed out of the, the belts. That's really all to it. Um, but there has been the, the story recently that Dominic and Ray, they've been fighting in singles matches against Jimmy and Jay. Mm -hmm. And Dominic's winning these matches, but he's noticeably getting cockier every single week. And oh, no. a lot of, yeah, <laughs> I think they might be playing a split between father and son soon. I think the Usos are retaining. The Usos? I don't know. I feel like the Mysterios can come back. They this. could also do the story of where they win the belts and it just adds more cockiness to the fire for Dominic. I'm just hoping. But you know, That would be good. I really like the story of what they're doing with Dominic. They're finally trying to give him a character, which, I mean, he's only been here for a year and he's young as hell, so of course he doesn't have a character yet. It, that takes time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think Usos are going to win. It has a chance of being the match of the night. It has a chance. Dude, it's, not, not, it's not Tommy Riddle, dude. It, I think the Raw yeah, Tag Team title match is going to be more unpredictable, but in terms of in-ring action, I think this would be the better one. Gotcha. Uh, now, fifth match. The, the, the rematch from WrestleMania, this, in my opinion, is WWE's best match of 2021 so far, and I'm very happy to get to see this rematch live. Um, Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks for the belt. Um, Bianca's been a good champion, a really good champion. I've enjoyed everything she's been doing. Uh, even though I didn't, even though I wasn't particularly in love with the Bailey feud, it was at least good for the belt. So I have to say, um, even though Bianca has been a really good champion these past four months, I think they're going to put it back on Sasha. I think I they think should. I mean, after her turning her bill again and coming back from the filming of Mandalorian, I think this would be more of a great opportunity to kind of bring something to the women's division. Yeah, I yeah. Really and I do that. notice that last year, whenever uh, they put the SmackDown belt on her, it was right around the time before Mandalorian came on. So they're probably going to take advantage of it again uh, this year. Gotcha. So, yeah, Sasha Banks. Um, and, and another thing is, she can win over and over again, and fans won't give a shit because of Sasha Banks. Who doesn't love Sasha? Exactly, Banks, that's the point. They can get away with anything with that one. So yeah, I love Sasha too. She gonna win the belt. She gonna win everything. Thanks, bro. Yeah. So Bianca, I mean not Bianca, not Bianca. Sasha new champ. There we go. Mm -hmm. United States Championship match: uh, Sheamus versus Damian Priest. This could be a really good match if given the opportunity. But I feel like this is just one of those filler matches, unfortunately. Yeah, but seeing Sheamus um, perform, that's going to be always a topper. Sheamus is always fun to mm -hmm. watch. Uh, Sheamus is definitely right now uh, is probably doing the best work he's ever done in his entire career. Um, Which is kind of sad. But hey, you know, it takes time, I, I suppose. Yeah. We're in the Vince McMahon, but that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> but Sheamus has been killing it recently. Damian Priest was one of my favorites in NXT within the past year. So he's gained a good opportunity here. I think it'll be a good match. Uh, but like I said, hopefully they get the opportunity to showcase that. Um, this is one of the tougher matches to predict here. And what is that? Sheamus has, uh, you know, been the champ since um, WrestleMania. And Damian Priest at WrestleMania, he did that tag team match with uh, Bad Bunny. Mm -hmm. and, which was a huge success. But he hasn't really done too much since then. So, I don't know. It feels like there's some plan for Damian Priest, but it's not a clear-cut one. That's kind of the thing that's worrying me here with Damian Priest. So, this match could literally go either way, but I'm gonna go for the safe one, and that's, I'm just gonna say Sheamus or Teams. Hopefully, but again. A Damian Priest one would be nice too, though. I'm not gonna be against either result. I really like what Sheamus is doing, and I really like what Damian Priest is doing, so I can't be against whatever they do. Exactly, either or, match is gonna be a great outcome no matter what happens. Now, 
This next match is what I believe is going to be the actual best match in it. There's Banks versus Belair, which could be it, mm -hmm. and the two other tag team bouts, but out of all of them, I think this is the one in my head that's probably going to be a match of the night. Rollins versus Edge. Now, I've never seen Edge live in my entire life. Same here. And I've never even been to a WWE event before until today. Like, that's going to be insane. And that's, we just, we talked about CM Punk earlier, but Edge is another, you know, story we should not be overlooking here. Like, he went through nine years of constantly being told, no, he can't come back, to when he could finally come back. I mean, it probably wasn't nine years exact, but he, did, he, 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 he took that nine year break, mm -hmm. uh, take your leave. So, whenever he did return uh, last year, oh. uh, take your leave. So, whenever he did return, uh, last year, it felt really special, but unfortunately his return was in front of an empty crowd. And then, of course, he, he did a few other things in front of an empty crowd, but, you know, he got to perform at WrestleMania, and in my opinion, that's, that, that WrestleMania match was his best match since his return. And I know. I can, whenever I see, look at TV and see Edge in front of fans, I, I can tell you, Edge is one of the most passionate wrestlers alive, but it's like something super surreal whenever we see like his old wrestlers uh, coming Edge. back from all yeah. the years but yeah. they're still great that's the best part even though like we're older they still yeah. have like, like Edge is Edge is not young here but he's wrestling better than 90% of the wrestlers not just in WWE in the entire world he's still one of the best of all time he's still one of the best today and I couldn't agree more. I can't I can't deny that and I'm gonna be honest here I all respect to Seth Rollins all right I think he's great but obviously we know what the story's about Seth Rollins is trying to put up the narrative that he's better than Edge. Everyone and their grandmother knows that is not the truth whatsoever. No, but he, he has the potential, but it's not going to be for another couple of I years. I don't even think it's about the potential. If we're talking about accolades, Seth Seth's pretty close to that point of, of being uh, Edge of being at Edge's level. He's done a, he's he's accomplished a lot of shit, but that's the thing. Seth has always been that step under Roman, and that's the whole thing here. Uh, and it's obvious from talent to in ring presence, everything. Seth was just inferior to Roman and also inferior to John Moxley as well. He was just, even though the most athletic, always to me came across as the weakest member of the Shield. That's a bit harsh, don't you think, my dear? I mean, he still had some good matches here. He had some great too. matches, but look at Moxley and look at Reigns. They're, they're both killing it right now. What is Rollins doing compared to them? Nothing. I guess you're right. So I think that's fair, but he's still a good wrestler. Like, like, think about it like this: if if Rollins is going to lose the Edge, Roman's going to beat him. If Rollins is going to lose to Cena, Roman's going to beat him. If Rollins is going to lose to Lesnar, Roman's going to beat him. At the end of the day, Rollins is just that step under Roman, and that's why Edge needs a win because he hasn't won a match in two pay per view appearances. So they're giving him the win. Uh, if they give Seth the win, that's great, but I don't think WWE should even try to put out the idea that Seth is as good or better than Edge, because no, it would be like a biggest like slap to the face to like all these old returning fans. Like, yeah. I saw that event in wrestling. So, like, they they tried to ago. do it with Roman and Undertaker at WrestleMania five years ago, and it absolutely backfired. So, I, I, just, I can say this. They're not going to have Seth beat Edge. If they do, I won't be mad. I'll just be questioning it. It's like... But anyway, yeah, so Edge winning, that just makes the most sense. And WWE likes their part-timers, so it, 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 it's fair. Now, this match is going to be, now... This is what I think it is? This is what I think it is? The first of two main events. Mm -hmm. Bobby Lashley, Bill Goldberg, WWE Championship. We'll probably have Gage at ringside as well. Oh, brother. Okay, where do we begin with this? Where do we even begin? Originally, the plan was Lashley versus Lesnar, and Goldberg was the backup. I could say how long that is for so long, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to say what I think is going to happen and not waste anybody's time. So, I'd say that this match is going to be at the most five minutes. Um, Ooh, five minutes? I don't, think a bit large. I don't think you've actually seen Goldberg matches. The only two moves he has is the spear and the jackhammer. And whether he wins or loses, 
all the matches typically go up to three to five minutes. The longest match he's actually had since his return was 10 minutes long, and it was critically uh, considered to be one of the worst wrestling matches in history. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so that, that kind of says what I, need, what I need to say about Goldberg. So, why is he even at this thing? Why is he even because, at this thing? No, to tell you the truth, he's, 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 on a, he's on a contract. I believe he gets paid at least $2 million for every match he wrestles, and he wrestles twice a year. What a waste of money! <laughs> no, no, I, I'm gonna really, But his legacy, though. But, but, but Daniel, his, his, his legacy, though. Yeah, I know. That, that, that's basically what happens, dude. And every time he returns, they show promo packages. And no, oh, this is who he was back in the 90s because they know nobody from today gives a fuck about Bill Goldberg. <laughs> Just like Jesus Christ. Yeah. It, it's fine, though. Yeah, honestly, uh, I think. I think there'll be a catch here though. I think we're gonna get something that we don't expect. A lot of fans think that this is just gonna be a three to five minute match. And then, uh, you know, at either Goldberg wins and, you know, steals the belt with him and we don't see him for three months, just like they do with Lesnar. That's a very likely possibility. Mm -hmm. And the other possibility uh, is Lashley retains and builds momentum from it. And I think that's the easy, safe bet to say that Lashley's retaining in a three to five minute match where they just spear the hell out of each other. But I can honestly say this. I'm gonna go with a ballsy, ballsy prediction. And what's that good say? Spiggy's a SmackDown guy. Mm -hmm. I'd say we have a segment because Broke Baron Corbin's a thing. Uh, he stole the briefcase from Biggie because it says the word money in the bank on it. Listen, the money in the bank on it. Since we started on that subject, let me tell you how fucking pissed off I was. <laughs> That outcome. I'm sorry, dude, but Biggie did not deserve that win. That should have went to Riddle, and I, I'm glad he's coming back from RK with Rob. Right now, what I mean? But I'm sorry, dude. He was nowhere okay. near. Let me say this, though. Randy Orton, no, no. Riddle has only been on the main roster for one year. Okay. Biggie's been there for nine years. I don't care. That's <laughs> not fair, though. I don't care. Did you just do your match? Did Riddle with every single RK? I think you need to rewatch the how insane that crowd went when Biggie took that briefcase. They went nuts. I know they did. They love him, and I love him too. No. <laughs> Biggie. And a chair. No, Biggie. No, bitch. fuck Biggie. He's so oh, trash. No, <laughs> fuck you. We should have went to Riddle. No. No, you no. Biggie. have Biggie cash in on Lashley and not Roman. That's how I see it. Because, no offense to Lashley, Lashley has been the inferior champion to Roman. So, that's all I can say about it. Now, speaking of Roman. Main event time. Listen, now we get to argue in listen, front of the camera for three minutes. We're, we're listen, me and him are completely split for this this goddamn match, and we've been arguing about this for like a week. We yeah. I think Roman's winning, and he thinks Cena's winning. He thinks Cena's going to beat Ric Flair's record. I think Roman's going to retain and have that WrestleMania match with The Rock. No, because here's the deal with Cena, right? If he wins the belt here. He has to retire here. I think this isn't his last match. I can see them giving him the 17th belt. Mm -hmm. But Roman's on too much fire right now for them to do that. No, dude. Roman needs to stop. He's so OP. In the last few years, dude, it's going to be John Cena. I mean, look, look, he just came back from Suicide Squad, right? Okay, John let's Cena think about like this. Okay, but think about it like this. Okay. If John Cena wins the belt, what does they do with John Cena? Who does he fight for? Them? I don't think they care, dude. See, it's, it's, see, like, there's no long-term plan if Cena wins. But with Roman, we get Finn Balor immediately after Cena. That's obvious. Then, uh, after Finn Balor, we could go to Shinsuke. They're never going to do it. They're never going to do it, but they can. But they, they know they can. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, after that, we can start saying up for The Rock. We'll make his one-time appearance, and that's well, all you're going to get. Well, the rumor right now is that since this year's Survivor Series is going to be the 25th anniversary to his debut, mm -hmm. he's going to return there. Probably just to make an announcement. Guys, I'm fighting in WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah. Buy the pay-per-view. I mean, well, because here's the deal. They're trying to sell 100,000 seats for WrestleMania, which mm -hmm. is the highest attendance record they've ever had besides WrestleMania 32. So they're probably going to need him to do that. That's fair. So, 
I think they're, they're obviously going to set up cousin versus cousin. They're not going to do Roman versus. They're not going to do Cena versus Rock three. That's ridiculous. I mean, anything's possible, man. You know what? We are in the year twenty twenty one. It really anything is possible. Cena versus Rock three could happen. And the sad thing is, I wouldn't even reject it. No, I'm just saying that I think Cena is going to win just for. Of all the momentum that's happening with Hollywood and all that, and you know, WWE has that big competition with AEW currently. No, I know. And I think they need the boost in the views, and you know, really the same I get you. As great as Roman team. is, the money route will see them. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> I wish you were wrong about that, but it's true. I, I could be wrong too, dude. You could be wrong. wrong. I, I still, I think thing. Roman's winning. I personally am going to scope the safe bet and say Roman no, wins. So, so, yeah. Uh, and you're obviously going to predict Cena. So, or if not Cena, dude, the Gnomics is going to come back as a persona, or we're going to get a fucking Finn you know Balor. The only, way I'll, be, the only way I'll be okay with Cena winning is if he comes out to the word life, this is basic fucking Gnome. No, that's the only way I'm going to accept that shit. That's the only way I'm going to accept that shit. But outside of that, um, I expect a good show. I don't think it'll be the best SummerSlam of all time, but I think we're going to get a good one. And this one definitely has a huge feel to it compared to most other SummerSlams. This feels... Maybe in terms of card, not better than a WrestleMania like they advertise. No. But it has the atmosphere and feel of a WrestleMania heading into it. And that's something I can genuinely appreciate. And at the end of the day, yes, we kind of have our trash like Alexa versus Eva in the Raw Women's Championship match. We have a potential women's classic with the SmackDown Women's Belt. Mm -hmm. We have two tag team matches that both could be great. We have two world title matches that could... One could be unpredictable and fun. The other can be just safe and awesome. Flat or who knows? Yeah, really know. we don't even know what to get from the other one. Mm -hmm. But it's it's exciting that we don't know what we're gonna get from the other one. And then Edge versus Rollins is a dream match many fans have had for years. And to give you more background on Edge versus Rollins, back in 2014, Edge was still not competing. And back in uh, you know back then. Uh, when Rollins was money in the bank, mm -hmm. there was a segment where Rollins and the Authority attacked Edge and was threatening to curb stomp uh, Edge on top of the briefcase. And since then, Ed, Seth Rollins has repeated this Edge. I should have done what I, I should have done that seven years ago. I should have done. I should have your career right there and then. Yeah, no, that's basically what he's been saying over and over again. And obviously, Edge ain't gonna take that shit. So obviously, that's the story behind that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, like I said, we have a potential good, maybe even great. SummerSlam happening tomorrow. I'm gonna keep my hopes up because WWE, after that kick in the dick from AEW, really need to put on a good show. We can only hope for the best. And then, weren't you talking about the NXT was gonna get rebranded? Yeah, after NXT after after after, like after Takeover 36 on Sunday, NXT is officially gained change. We don't know if it's even gonna be NXT anymore. It could literally be a completely different show. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, 23 minutes worth of predictions. I hope you guys are excited to see us vlog for tomorrow. Um, I know I'm excited for the show. And would you like to announce anything for your channels or your future? Like you're planning on doing good stuff? Oh yeah, so basically I am just starting out on here. My name is, once again, like I said in the intro, Daniel Rose. And I'll be doing live streams, uh, podcasts of wrestling every week. Uh, whenever this all officially gets you know, boosted. And obviously I'll be having good help from this fellow over here yes, sir. to get started. So if anybody's interested in checking my channel out, that'd be great. Yeah. Any last words, Zach? Uh, I didn't even know you were live like that this time. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs>